uh, coach, you know, just starting off, um, saw you guys a little bit Saturday, a little bit different looking team, a lot back <laughs> still though. You know, how do you feel about this group heading into uh, you know this opening? Weekend? Yeah, really, you, you said it well. I mean, we, we return some kids that have been very meaningful in some very big matches, but you know, we're replacing a lot. You know, I said, I spoke in an event last week, you know, we graduated six seniors. Uh, we had another player, Sam Canner, who had to medically retire because of a, a back injury. And then we lost our starting Libro to a knee injury in the weight room the day before we started practicing. And so, you know, we're down eight, you know, we have eight, eight players gone from that roster a year ago, <clears throat> you know, when you only have 15 or so kids. So, I mean, over half our roster is turned over. And so, um, you know, that's concerning. I mean, it's going to take a while to, to iron out some things early on. And, and we don't have a schedule that's very forgiving in that regard. Um, but I also know that we have players like these two and Paige Briggs and kids that have been through it that have won at a very high level. Um, but we're going to need them to anchor this thing for a while until we get some younger players lined out and understanding um, how hard you have to play consistently to win at this level. Coach, you mentioned you're concerned about the turnover, but you know you guys have that top 25 preseason ranking, mm -hmm. new core. You're hosting a powerhouse team to open the season. With all that excitement, you know, how do you kind of focus on that, and build on that excitement? You know, to kind of make up for those losses that you mentioned this season. Yeah, well, you know, again, there's a lot of exciting stuff. We, you know, this this non-conference schedule. Look, look deep. You know, there's there's Louisville's and Tennessee's and people like that, but there are some of the best mid-major teams in the country on that schedule too. I think I looked at it yesterday. There's almost 350 Division One programs in the country, and I think we only have two matches. Uh, with teams that are below 150, so the bottom 200 in the country. And so it's going to be challenging, you know, all the way through. And um, I like our team a lot. I think we'll be able to compete with anybody on our schedule. Um, <clears throat> I'm not worried about that end of it. I know we're going to be able to compete with anybody on our schedule. I just think maybe we're a little more vul more vulnerable than we've been in the past because we had such experience everywhere and a lot of those role playing positions and and we've got new faces and so I think it'll be a little more uneven and we're going to have to grind our way through some of these and, and lean on these kids a little bit heavier you know for a while uh, top 25 I mean we, we we deserve to be a top 25 team based on uh, what we've done and what we return and all of that but um, but I don't know that we're playing at a top 25 level yet and um, you know, we, but we will. I, I like this team a lot, and uh, and I think good things lie ahead. Mark and Katie, um, how nice was it not to play this way and just have a little bit of a relaxing time? I know like, that you were running, you were even yourself with the uh, track field, but uh, how nice was it not to have the volleyball and just break the practice? It was kind of nice just to watch the underclassmen grow as individuals and players on our team and watch them excel their game and see what they could bring in the fall. So it was exciting for me. Yeah, and the spring is so important for everyone, really, because that's when we train our hardest. Um, and that's when we see the most improvement and when we can really like focus on technique and things that we need to get done and clean up. Um, so I just think it was really important that we finally got to have that again. Um, yeah, and it's really encouraging because you can see your growth. So. This is a question for either Lauren or Katie. Both of you are super senior. Yes. So on paper, you're super seniors, but what is it going to take to have a super, super senior season? You can go. I feel like for me, it's going to take probably the same thing it took the last year um, and a little more leadership on my end, which is something I'm working on as of right now. But um, it's going to take, it's going to take. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think um, to have a, like, I just want everyone to be bought in my, like, final year. Um, I think that's all I could ask for from this team. Um, I'm really, really grateful to be back. Like, I shouldn't be here. Um, so I just want everyone to be locked in with me. And um, I think that's all I can ask for. And that's going to lead to a great season. kind of said, a lot of turnover on the roster, but you have these two girls with you right now that are going to be leaders. You also got a few others. Just how important is it to have them with you um, during this turnover? 
Well, it's it's huge. You know, it's you know, I think I think we have in in Lauren and Katie and Paige Briggs. I think we have three players that are as good as anybody in our league, and um, and they're kids that have played a lot of volleyball here. Um, they know what it looks like. You know, they know what it looks like at a high level. They know what it takes at a high level. They know the consistency. That's that's the big thing. I mean, when you look at what our program has done, it's been about consistency. And sometimes young players don't always understand the consistency that you have to do it with day in, day out to achieve the things that we've achieved. And, you know, that's as a coach, that's the biggest concern that I have is do we show up every single day and and play with great effort and competitiveness and, you know, all those kinds of things. And, and these kids, you know, it's they don't have to hear me say it. They know they've done it. And, you know, they these are kids, like I said, in the biggest moments of their careers have stepped up and made big time plays. And and I have no doubts that that'll be the case again. I, you know, I spend a lot of time this year looking at everybody we're going to play and think about all the ways that they can attack us and how we're going to stop this kid and all that. But then, you know, every once in a while, I'll pick up a, a Western Kentucky stat sheet and realize what other teams are going to have to do to stop, you know, some of the some of the things that we have. And, and it's, you know, we're good. We're, we're deep. We're good. We're talented. Our young players are good. You know, they just have to go out and, you know, once upon a time, Lauren Matthews needed to go out and prove that she could do it at this level. You know, she was a talented young kid, and she did. And same with Katie Eisenbarger. And we've got our, our young players we all really like. I think these two would say that, too. They, they're good kids. They work hard. They're talented. They want to be good. But wanting to be good and knowing what it takes to be good sometimes are different things. And so uh, it'll be, you know, it'll be interesting to see how quickly they grow up over the next few weeks. <clears throat> Uh, no, uh, Kelsey, Brangers. Kelsey Brangers. Yeah, Kelsey Brangers, you know, all spring was our starting Libro replacing Logan Kale. <clears throat> if you remember, Kelsey Libroed some for us last year uh, in and out of our lineup and had a really good spring for us. And, um, you know, it's a big blow for us defensively. We're going to have to, there's no one individual player that will be able to step in and replace what she did defensively because, you know, here in every sport, defense wins championships. And Kelsey Bringers is our best returning defensive player. And so that's that's a challenge for us. You know, uh, Abby Schaefer, a true freshman, is probably who will be Libroing for us this week. Um, I love that kid. She is uncommon mentally. She is very stable and she's tough and she's competitive and all those things. And she's one of those kids that will have to grow up quickly. And, um, you know, but I, I think she'll be I think she'll be up to the challenge. But but it's going to take everybody pulling a little bit more weight defensively for us to to be the because offensively we're going to be phenomenal. There, there's I mean, we were second in the country last year in offense. Uh, Callie Bauer, our new setter, has done a great job with our offense. And uh, we, I don't think any of us have any doubts that we'll be a really good offensive team. And so this team will go as far as we can defend. And, and losing your top defender right away is not the way you want to start preseason, but it's the hand we were dealt. And, and so, you know, we move on with it from there. Coach, uh, I was at the clinic, uh, you know, this past mm -hmm. year, and it was so nice to see so many fans show up, even with so many things happening in mm -hmm. soccer, mm -hmm. soccer. How nice was it? That was awesome. Like, are you kidding? For a for a inner squad scrimmage and a little clinic and a volleyball. I mean, it was awesome. There were people everywhere, and they were so engaged, and the kids were having a blast. And you know, I walk in here for for the volleyball one on one session, and we're adding chairs to the room. There's so many people here, and this community loves volleyball right now, and uh, and we love this community. We appreciate them so much for the support that they give, and it, I'm on a mission this year. To, to get those stands filled. You know, we talk about this world of NIL and everything else that's going on. There's nothing that means more to these kids than support from this community and people in the stands and playing in a great environment. And this is a year where we're hosting the conference championship at the end of the year. And so I am on a mission to build our atmosphere all season long with more and more and more fans and knowledgeable fans and rowdy fans and make this a place that by year's end uh, that, that, that people don't want to come in and try to win a conference championship. So more to that point, I know it's fantastic. We actually talked about sort of what the Hilltop community means to you. And so kind of hearing Coach talk about those things that were going on this week, I mean, for you in your last year, when you see those fans in the stands, how much more special is it going to be when you, you know, value that Hilltop that they 
It's gonna be very special just because like Katie said, we're not really supposed to be here. Like this is a bonus year. So I'm just grateful for the opportunity to be here and be able to engage with the fans like we did at FanFest because we didn't have FanFest for like two years. And so it was just, it was a really good moment, especially this clinic, like working with the kids and seeing all the smiles on their faces. And at the end when we did autographs, all of them asking for pictures or just asking us little questions. It was, it was really nice. Mm -hmm. Man, that's a great question because that is one of the biggest things we we have to. We lost our you know uh, best server in school history in Hallie Shelton, and um, and so everybody on this team has to pick up a little bit of that slack. Um, you know, Katie Howard is a kid that has really developed in terms of her serving game. I think you'll see her scoring a lot of points for us from the service line. But that is, you know, it's going to be like replacing these two kids a year from now. There's no one single person that's going to step in and do that. And again, when you talk about defending in our game, the first line of defending is aggressive serving. And we've got to be a really good aggressive serving team. And it's something we've focused on since January. And, and every kid that goes back there has got to be better than they were a year ago and um, and for us to kind of replace the things we did because there were a lot of games that the separation in them last year was the five six point run that Hallie Shelton would go on from the service line and so um, so far I, you know I think we got a lot of kids that are improved I think Katie Howard has really stepped forward and done a really good job from there but um, that'll be something we're going to be keeping a close eye on these first couple weeks. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Another great question. You know, Kaylin Jackson, you know, kind of got overshadowed a little bit with some of the other superlative performances that we had. And um, but I looked at the stat sheet yesterday, and she hit almost 380 last year as a team. You know, as a as a right side hitter, and uh, another one of those young players that has to step forward. in Kennedy Coyle on the right side. Kennedy's a kid. Katie talked about spring and training, and there's no one who grew their game more than Kennedy Coyle did this spring. And she's a kid that we're excited about. We think she can really play. And uh, we think she's going to do a really good job for us there. But you know, again, it, 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 with all those young players, it's not the ability to do it. It's the consistency with which you do it. And that's going to be, there, there, you know, there's no way to answer that question until we get out here and start playing games. But she's, she's a very talented kid. We'll, we'll slide into that role as our right side hitter. And, and throughout the spring, did a really, really good job for us. Somewhere, same with Christy, and then mm -hmm. you guys adjust a couple years back. Mm -hmm. Keeping that staff intact, how much does that help? You know, things kind of going over the season to season. Yeah, I'll let you guys start. <laughs> you Talking about staff. Yeah, um, my whole you know career here, we've pretty much had the same staff, minus Christy changing her role a little bit, um, and I think that is like crucial to how. Um, our communication is, how we're on the same page with everything um, as far as coaching. And um, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's been huge to our success. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, for me, I, it's, it's why our culture is what it is. I mean, uh, we, I, I am incredibly blessed to have you know three coaches in there that could be head coaches themselves right now and I think it so many things I think speak to the culture of our program and I think the fact that they've stayed here and continued to you know be a part of WKU volleyball really speaks to <clears throat> their love for this place but our respect for one another from head coach to assistant coach I, I really don't I'm the head coach because I come to press conferences and turn in the lineup sheet, and I, but I, I, ne I never look at it like that. When I sit down in staff meetings with my staff, we are, we are all just sitting there brainstorming, trying to figure out. They are all bringing as much to the table as I bring, you know, in terms of, of coaching this sport and developing these kids and all that. And, you know, I'm, again, I'm, I'm, I'm 
understand how incredibly fortunate I am with the longevity that we've had with the staff that we have in place. And, and again, I think the thing when you look at WKU Volleyball that blows your mind looking back right now is the consistency with which we've done things year to year. And that starts with a, a good, strong foundation with our coaching staff. Yeah, Katie, I think I saw a video a while back where they were kind of hating on your music choices. Um, oh, why? good Lord. That was unfounded, too, I have to say. Is it really that bad? It's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> They're just not cultured, okay? No. I like a wide variety. I like 70s and 80s. I like some gospel. They get mad when I put that on in the way. <laughs> there is a time and place for everything. <laughs> and sometimes our music is not the time or place. Yeah, it's more of that because I'll throw on some music. They're like, this is just not the vibe right now, Katie. Yeah, so I get my privileges revoked really fast. <laughs> Let's just say some of us are more open-minded to other options than others. Yes. That's. That, I think we'll just leave it at that. But uh, I'm, I'm on board with Katie's. Katie's well-roundedness. Yeah. Uh-oh. I'm pretty sure in, the in rap, that interview so I mentioned Travis as well. So, like, <laughs> his voice does not count right now. In case you didn't hear it the first time, some of us are more open-minded than others <laughs> when it comes to musical choices. <laughs> Anything else? Anything else? Awesome, guys. Thank you guys Thank so much. Thank you. Thanks, guys.